Hello, I'm Todd, and this is part two of my presentation on user interface design. In part one, I covered a lot of the core processes of UI design that I do, as well as some projects I've worked on. In the second part, I want to discuss some of the things that can supplement good UI, so some data viz, and then some trends I'm seeing in video game UI. So data viz. This comes up when information needs to be displayed, and the client is not sure how to present it. This isn't technically UI design, but I find it ends up in my lap a lot. So for example, I'll show this wireframe spread I did for Adobe. This software had a section that was loaded with widgets that displayed info. In this wireframe, the user is dragging widgets onto a dashboard. What you see here are just the wireframe placeholders of these widgets before I actually flush them out. Or here are the actual widgets with no real info. I'm not sure I can legally show you the actual widgets with the actual data. But you can get an idea of the kinds of things you might see. Basically, Adobe would say, this widget needs to show this data. How do we present that? Then it would be up to me to think of the best graphs or charts or color map or whatever to put in that widget. Some of this stuff got pretty tech, like bar graphs inside of the bars on a bar graph. Coming up with this stuff is almost like solving little puzzles. I actually enjoy it quite a bit. Here you are seeing some final comps of the software screens. This gray one here is mine. Next, I'd like to speak some more about user experience, focusing on some of the more interactive UIs I've seen. I mean, basically, UI is all technically interactive. What I'm referring to is stuff along the lines of what you're seeing here, stuff that's going to go beyond the standard static navigations, adding things like motion or audio to make it more engaging. I love this stuff, and I've been trying to pitch these kinds of ideas for years. The problem is this stuff doesn't really belong in your standard business app, which is what I'm usually working on. I've noticed, however, that this type of stuff totally flies in video games. Often just the most basic menus in video games are amazing. This here is from a game called Dirt 3. We have these engaging 3D menus that are presented to us with a lot of flash. This is Mirror's Edge, which is just a gorgeous game from logo to UI to gameplay. And lastly, my very favorite, this is from the original Dirt game. This one to me feels like I'm right inside a nice nice motion graphics piece. I love motion graphics, so the idea of interacting with them is very cool to me. I should point out too that a huge part of all this UX is the audio. So lastly, I'd like to talk about some trends I'm noticing in game and UI. I'm going to call it integrated UX. Lately I'm seeing these gameplay UIs that are more immersively integrated into the gaming experience. Here's a gameplay trailer for Division, a game that's coming out soon. Right here you see a menu nav, yet you're still in game. Now this is awesome. Up until now, aside from an on-screen mini-map, most games I've played basically give you a whole new screen in order for you to look at your map. Here you can see the map just integrates itself right into the current game and scenario. First off, this looks amazing. Secondly, I assume that if you're being shot at or are running, it's an inopportune time to look at the map. So this is more realistic than a separate screen that basically removes you from or pauses the action completely. So I like how integrated this is. I look forward to seeing how this plays out. So next I'll show some examples from the Metro game series. Here the player holds up an actual in-game list of mission objectives. Again, not pausing the game to look at this info. There's even a mission objective beacon in the form of a built-in compass. So basically this is just like some really advanced skeuomorphic design. Now here the player has a gas mask on and the filter is expiring. Notice there's no meter bar in the corner denoting how much time you have. Instead the character's breathing starts to audibly labor as you enter the danger zone. There is also an integrated indicator on the watch. So the info is there, but it's blended right into the game and scenario. It also hits you from two different senses. So this to me simulates a more realistic experience and sort of affects the player in a new way, a more subliminal way that hits closer to home. Lastly, notice the pressure gauge on the gun. Now this is a pneumatic gun that you have to pump up, sort of like a pellet gun. Once again, this pressure indicator is blended right into the on-screen gun design itself. This means that this UI was thought up during or even before the concept art phase of this weapon, and that's impressive. So I really like this step towards UI that's kind of not even UI anymore. I hope to see more of this type of stuff and possibly work on stuff like this. So anyways, that concludes this second portion of my presentation on UI design. Stuff I've done, trends I'm seeing, and stuff I'd like to be involved with. As always, thanks for watching.